First time to Turkey? No, no, no. Long time ago, different life. Now you come back? Yes, I'm looking for something. You can find whatever you wish in Turkey. Great, you're helping all these random people and everything. But stay off the radar. Something happened to one of ours. So I'm obligated to look into it. Thought you were retired. Oh, I am. Just like you're dead. <laughs> yeah. What's the matter? The first movie, it's about this guy lonely. Like he went to a diner for reading. Right. right. But now he's driving a, 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 a taxi driver. Right. He wanna connect with people. It's a different character than the first movie. But, 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 yes. But go ahead, ask your question. I was going to say, he wants to, he wants to connect, but he's still in the driver's seat. Yeah. But he, he needs to connect. Well, he avoids the connection because he tried with a kid to connect with something, like to mm. teach him something. Mm. But he's still struggling with that feeling of his past. And, you know, unfortunately in this story, as soon as he opens up, to the yes. kid. Look what know, happened. Look what happens. Your character right in this movie is more important than in the first one. Yeah. Because in the first movie, we saw this character like lonely, like he's going to a diner reading, mm -hmm. and now he's trying to connect with yes. people while driving. Yes, exactly. And it's a different relationship with your character exactly. than in the first movie. It's like a more human character. She almost tells him in Equalizer 2, Susan almost tells Robert exactly the opposite of what she tells him in the first. First movie was look like domestic, like just in the United States. Right. Now it goes globally. Right. Why you take that decision to make a movie like bigger than yeah. the first one? Yeah, well I think it's just because I think that, uh, first I think Denzel's more global, and I think the, uh, the, the, the world, justice in the world is important, not yeah. just locally. And so I, hopefully we can continue, continue that on so that eventually, if there's a three, then it would be International, maybe the whole thing takes place somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It could start here and go somewhere else. Um, I think that's important. You know, there's no reason to have the equalizer just be here. <laughs> What's the point? Samuel, lift off. <laughs> what kind of men are that? <laughs> Make sure she gets in the apartment, okay? I also feel like, I know you love to direct too, but most of your movies always have something to say. When you are like performing these kind of action characters, you always have to transmit some human connection, not just this guy who mm. like to fight, mm -hmm. but you always create this human connection mm -hmm. with the audience. Mm -hmm. How do you develop, how do you create that with the, with, the, with, the, with the writer and the director? You know, I, I made, I was talking to someone earlier, I made four or five films with Tony Scott and we sort of, over the years, developed character-based action kind of a movie, if you will. Someone we care about or someone with faults or someone with loneliness or someone with the issues we all have, yet they, they have this other side to them that we root for. But in a sense, I guess it, it's, they're just like us. Your character is like a, one of the most important right now, I mean, in the movie, because Aww. it's like a, like the point where the character have to make some decisions. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I love that the point of view of the director's show to the audience, how important, it's not just an action movie. Yes, exactly. It's something like human who have consequences. And, and this is a beautiful thing also with, with Mr. Fuqua, that he can do this action, so exciting, so you know, dramatic, and storytelling at the same time, not just boom, 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 but storytelling all the while, right? And thrilling uh, stunts and things. And, but at the same time, as important, I would have to say more important to him, is who are these exactly. people? Why are they behaving in this way? And this is when he does this beautiful generosity 
to see what is Mr. Washington bringing. You know, he so, knows he's got the finest actor in the United States with having Mr. Washington there. So what does he bring? And then what do I bring? Trusting the people that he's working with. Um, and also It's like writing. making the right ingredients to make the perfect Just cake. the right ingredients, exactly right. And, and, uh, and I also noticed that the Denzel's character evolved. Like in the first movie, he was this lonely guy who went to a diner mm. every time that he couldn't sleep. But right. now he's he's driving people mm -hmm. and listening people and talking to people. Right. Why do you make that decision to like probably because your style, the connecting with with the with the audience? Yeah. Well, yeah. Richard Wank wrote the script. He wrote that in, but I like it because he's trying to connect to people. And it's interesting about being a driver, right? Because when you're a driver, normally people say things in front of a driver as if the driver's invisible. Yeah. You know, and they hear everything. And so I think that that's a great job for Robert McCall when he can't sleep at night to constantly be around people, constantly hear what they're saying or be able to look at them in the rear view and get a sense of who they may be, you know. And it's also a good place for the Equalizer to be able to help people. It's great you're helping all these random people. Stay off the radar. I feel that it looked like uh, this Asian scent in most of your action characters. Yeah. Like uh, Man on Fire. Like these characters uh -huh. with, with, with past. Right. Like they, they look so quiet. Why do you create these characters? Do you have any inspiration from the Asian movies? It, it, it could be. The, the writers do. But, but also, I just think that they, those both characters were developed that way. Like Man on Fire, he spent a lot of time yeah. alone. And... Both characters have a lot of pain in yes. their past that they don't necessarily want to share. I mean, look what happens to, to him in this film. But we never know what is the past. We assume many things. Right, but but I, we know a part of it has to do with his wife and yes. family, the, the yeah. loss. I have seen you in many roles. I followed your career since many years ago. And uh, you've been doing drama, like everything. And now I see you fighting. <laughs> in this new movie. And I, it was kind of cool. H cool. How was that training? No, thank you. Uh, well, not so much training, you know, but a, a rehearsal for the choreography for the fight. Um, you know, so I'm working with people who are very highly trained, right? The two gentlemen in the scene are they're, they're yes. fighters themselves, and they also um, do a lot of stunt work. The young woman who doubles me for portions of the, of the sequence, um, they're all quite professional at this. They do a lot of training. They do a lot of... I just showed up and sort of helped to get the story included in the fight. So it wasn't just a fight between two guys and a gal in a room, but it was helping the story be told. Yeah, it was a very important movie in, yeah. in the movie because yeah. it was like a, like a conflict. Yes, exactly. Also, exactly. So I, I was shocked because we always see you like at this, like, like like serious roles, oh. and I, it was kind of surprising, and I think the people would love that. Yes, I and loved I, it when I read it in the script. I felt so honored and pleased, and and really looked forward to to doing that part of it, and and uh, was was amazing to do. I've been following your career since uh, the Replacement Killers. Mm -hmm. I used to work in a video store, and I watched the movie, and I love it. Mm -hmm. And I've been like checking that you have the this kind of style with your characters mm. that you want that you enjoy developing like in a human way right not Absolutely. just in the action way right why is that well i think they're more uh relatable they're, they're more relatable to the audience you know once you sort of develop the characters and you you give them quirks just like you and i have and you feel like if you were trained then you could do that How do you guys shoot that final sequence? I fell in love with these action sequences in a in a hurricane. Right. How challenging was for you? It was it was it was interesting. A lot of water, <laughs> a lot of changing clothes, and and um, you know it was actually kind of um, not to say tedious, but because there were so many elements: wind, smoke, or water, this that. You know, it was piece by piece by piece. It wasn't like, oh, we do the whole thing and, and, and it's all perfect. This is your third movie with Antoine, right? Yes. How is the approach? Like, he, like he's a director. Like he loves to make action movies. How is the approach with the actors when he want to, like, something 
like to be done. Mm -hmm. How we approach to you because it's a different approach to the main character. How approach to the secondary? It's such a beautiful approach because some directors will say, well, you don't need any help, I'll leave you alone. And then you have no help. But the reason we call them the director is because we need them to direct us. So then in the end, we're all in the same movie together, you know? Or then you have somebody who stands in the middle of it and says, oh, she should do it like this. And then you go like this and then you go, oh, and because you're feeling so sad about that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but with Mr. Fuqua, he doesn't fade away and he doesn't do too much. Always in every circumstance, as much as is needed. He's there. My favorite sequence in the whole movie is the last one. Mm. How you create that in a hurricane? A hurricane. <laughs> like, yeah. I assume that was a real challenge for you guys. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was hard. I mean, you know, it, it, we had the, we took over the town. We had jet engines. We had debris. We took the, my art department. We knocked down trees. We did all that stuff. A lot of it in camera. And then uh, we had, we created the waves, those big waves crashing. That was cool. Yeah, we did that. and. Uh, it was a lot of work, you know, because I wanted to make it as organic as possible. I didn't want to rely on visual effects as much. Um, and then visual effects came and helped add the details that we couldn't, you know, you just I, couldn't do. You know? I think it works because you guys, like, it's not just, it's not the thing we, we see. It's how they react it's how to they the react things. To it. And at the end, you add this ingredient, like, mm -hmm. it's the personal stuff that people I know we'll feel, and, I, mm -hmm. and we want to connect more with the character. Yeah. And I'm hoping for a third part. Because, yeah, me too. <laughs> because this is your first sequel. Yeah, and, and Denzel's. And uh, how he works for you. Like, you have to connect with the first movie and work with these new characters mm -hmm. and adding something else. This is, mm -hmm. like, really new for you, I assume. Yeah, it is. It is. But I just look at it, I look at each script as its own. The good thing is that we have reference of this stuff, right? But yeah. I look at each script, so that if I didn't have the first one, could this stand on its own? And that's where I'd first start. And then from that point, then I remember uh, things the audience seemed to care about. Exactly. And so I try to make sure that those things are still there, you know? They killed my friend. So I'm gonna kill each and every one of them. The only disappointment is that I only get to do it once. It's a mistake to go to war with him. They're highly trained. They're going to war with me. Who are you? Your father, your mommy just didn't tell you. I punish the guilty. If you're lucky, I'll give you the opportunity to do the right thing. This ain't one of those times. Ah, call 911. Who are you, Jackie Chan? <laughs>